Llega el momento de presentarles al invitado de honor, <coughs> perdón, <coughs> quien como cada año pronuncia el discurso de graduación. En esta ocasión se trata del doctor Sumantran, vicepresidente ejecutivo del Consejo de Administración Industry Automotive en Reino Unido, así como vicepresidente del Consejo de Administración de Ashok Leyland. Hablamos de una persona que conoce a la perfección el sector automovilístico y manufacturero y que además forma parte del Comité de Asesoramiento Científico del Gabinete de Gobierno de la India, por no hablar de una amplia trayectoria en otras empresas automovilísticas de renombre como Tata o General Motors. Espero que nos aporte toda su experiencia como doctor en Ingeniería Espacial, Aeroespacial y sobre todo como gestor en el sector de la automoción. Dr. Sumantran, it has been a pleasure to have you here in Zaragoza, in our city. If you don't mind, could you please come here to start to give your speech? Thank you very much. The Honorable Minister, respected faculty, parents, and most importantly, students. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. I know it's a very important day for all of you, and uh, it gives me great honor to join you on such an important day. I'm here visiting from India on a very short three-day visit across Europe. And I've spent uh, this, in this trip a day in Sweden, a day in Paris, and today in Zaragoza. And I was addressing the Automotive Forum in Gothenburg in Sweden two days ago, where I was asked to deliver a talk about the old automotive and the transportation industry. And the title I chose for my talk was to say, it is always darkest before dawn. And why did I say it is darkest before dawn? Today, no matter where you are in the world, when you read about the economic news, the financial news, of course, there is a lot of concern in all parts of the world. There is a lot of concern about the Eurozone crisis. There is a lot of concern about austerity programs. There is a lot of concern, even in countries like Japan, about job creation. There are concerns in the United States about recovery. And so, it is understandable today if we read the newspapers and if we follow the news programs to become very discouraged to say there are a lot of things wrong with the world. Yet, I am an optimist. And my optimism stems not from an emotional clinging to the idea of a better future, but because of logical foundations wherein I believe that there is a brighter future for all of us. And hopefully, by the time I finish this lecture, I will explain to you what I mean by this. As you can imagine, I come from a part of the world which has also felt the consequences of this economic crisis, but yet is seeing growth. And when I see growth in countries like India or China or Thailand, I see growth not only for Asian companies, but I see growth for European companies. Last week before I left India, one airline in India just ordered 100 Airbuses. And I know CASA is a very important contributor and a supplier of Airbus. Volkswagen are making very profitable business in India and China. China is, in fact, one of the most profitable markets for a European company, Volkswagen. Siemens, another large European company, is making huge investments and huge profits, taking their business models not only to airports and transportation, but to entire cities. Michelin, another very large European brand, is making huge profits because of business growth in Asia. So I'm an optimist that when we look at the world together, I think while we will, without doubt, go through periods of decline and recovery, I believe that there is a bright future ahead. And I believe companies are looking to make sure that they are more competitive, more innovative, and 
more successful as they go to the future. If I now turn briefly to the subject of logistics and mobility, particularly all of you students, I have a strong reason to believe that you will enter a workforce that will be greatly demanding of your skills and your contribution. For the very simple reason that there is a very strong correlation between GDP growth and per capita mobility, whether it is person mobility or freight mobility. And as long as the world will keep growing, there will be a very strong demand for your skills and for your capabilities. Let us imagine how the world is being changed by mega trends, as they call them, and how this will have a bearing on the world of logistics and the world that you will contribute to. I will not speak about globalization. That is accepted. We all have come to understand that globalization is reality. Beyond this, I think we are moving to a very, very connected society. This morning, Professor Sheffi, Professor Gonzalez, and myself, we were talking about how at any time everybody is always connected. And this is going to completely change the way we use technology and, importantly, how we affect movement, mobility, and logistics. I am at this point at least connected with four different devices, and perhaps even as I speak, messages and information are coming. Our ability to reach and touch information, analyze the information, and therefore participate in what's going on in different parts of the world at every second is growing. And I think this is going to completely change the way. We used to think that traveling from one continent to another used to be a major task. Today, we're going to be able to influence things that are going on practically every millisecond. I think the world is also going to move to a more efficient world. And here, too, I think logistics will play a very important role. We're beginning to see systems getting more efficient to the point where we use systems and we pay for them. My nephew, who is studying in the United States, he no longer wants to own a car. He, works, he studies at a university in the US where when he wants a car for four hours, he goes, gets a zip car, pays for four hours, and after that, he drops the car off. He doesn't need the car anymore. We are looking at large IT systems where we are looking at pay to use. And all this means that we are driving efficiency. There is no point in buying a passenger car and letting it sit in the garage for four days a week. That is wasted investment. The world is moving towards eliminating waste in every possible way. And I believe this whole concept, this whole idea of pay as you use is both a democratic system, because whoever uses more pays more, and is also a system towards efficiency, because what you don't need, you don't pay for. And I think this will massively change the world of mobility. In fact, it is very interesting, since I see senior uh, generals from the Army here, even the US Army is looking at pay for use of power generation in the field. A company such as Cummins provides power to the fleet and to the field. And the US Army pays Cummins as a company only as they use. They don't own the generation set. They don't own the assets. So this is a concept that is very rapidly spreading, and it's extracting efficiency. Collaborate. I think uh, I understand that this is already a very, very mixed group here, uh, group from various nations, students from various countries. I think the world is moving towards even greater degrees of collaboration, collaboration that we never thought would exist. If I were to again quote an example from the world of logistics, I was recently in a conference in Hamburg where a concept was displayed where the two biggest competitors of biscuit distribution in London are sharing trucks so that they reduce the CO2 impact and therefore provide fewer trucks to make stops around the cities to distribute their biscuits. These were two competitors who were fighting with each other very aggressively in the market for market share, but they decided that as far as efficiency and CO2 reduction was concerned, that they would collaborate. We're also beginning to see urbanization. 
on a scale that we never believed would happen. As you know, I come from a country with a very large population. But in my state of Tamil Nadu, which has a population of over 50 million, in that state, the fraction of urban population is already 46%. And we are seeing across the world massive concentrations of people into mega cities. I think we are going to have to learn how to deal with such large concentrations of people and yet have effective economies, effective infrastructure, and most importantly, cost efficient and environmentally efficient systems. We had a recent uh, interaction with some of the planning commissioners of uh, New York City. And the way cities are changing the landscape is having a huge impact in the quality of life. Today, for instance, the famous Times Square has been blocked off for vehicle use. It is now only for pedestrians. It is changing the way people move inside inner cities. And it is very rapidly changing the experience of citizens in the city because what used to be people locked in cars and moving from one place to the other has now gone to a city where people are out on the streets, in a, in a way I would say a bit like Saragossa here. People are out on the streets, enjoying the shopping, enjoying the restaurants, and being out in the open. And to no surprise, people are finding that the quality of life is getting better, the air is getting cleaner, and the whole economy is getting more efficient. And finally, I think as we have gone through one economic downturn after another, we will work towards leaner systems. We can't afford cost where we don't need to. And here again, I believe all of you from your training in the world of logistics will have to play a very important role. Again, at breakfast, we were talking about some of the benchmark Japanese companies and the, and the ways in which they manage their inventory and manage their material movement. In fact, I was talking about one of our, I know Spain is a very large motorcycle in country. In India, the largest motorcycle uh, manufacturer is a Honda affiliate, and they make four and a half million motorcycles each year. And in one factory that makes four million motorcycles every year, at the end of every hour, the finished goods inventory is 45 minutes. More than 45 minutes, the products don't stay on the plant. They're out, they're out to distributors, they're out to dealers. And this means that your systems are lean, your working capital is lean, your material management is lean, and this is how we're going to have to learn to be profitable in a world that is getting to be more and more competitive and more and more cost efficient. So looking ahead, what do I see happening and what do I see will be the path to a better life for all of us and this glorious dawn that we're looking for? I think, without a doubt, I'm a firm believer in technology. Technology and innovation will have a very important role to play in how we change our lives, make our lives better and more efficient. I believe that we will increasingly focus on the user experience. Today, you don't own a BMW because it's a car. You own a BMW because of the user experience. You don't own an iPhone today because it's a mobile phone. You own an iPhone for the experience. And I think we will move more and more towards ex expanding from mere product performance to the idea of user experience. And most importantly, I believe we will redefine domain. There is a very classic story about how two companies in Japan in the 70s decided to expand their business. One was Panasonic, who were the largest makers of tape recorders and cassette recorders. And they went around asking people whether they would like a miniature tape recorder. And the answer was, no, I don't want a miniature tape recorder. Sony went around and asked people, would you like to listen to music when you're jogging? And everybody said, of course, I would like to listen to music when I'm jogging. Both Sony and Panasonic had the same idea. Sony defined their product as music when you're on the move. Panasonic defined their business as a small tape recorder. 
Sony went on to create the Walkman, and the rest is history. And of course, the same story has been repeated with Apple and the iPhone. So I think we have to redefine our domain, and this is why I believe that not only the whole world, but also Europe will have a dawn very soon. I believe Europe will have, with all its technological capabilities, with all its knowledge resident in Europe, I believe with a redefinition of horizons to redefine the whole globe of markets and opportunities, I see Europe very quickly recovering. And I believe this because of three fundamental reasons. Any country, whether it's China or South Korea or India, when we look at the foundations for economic growth, we talk about two things. First is that economic liberalization. I think nobody can today say that Europe is not economically liberalized. And while we will continue to make progress, Europe is a very liberal economy. So you have the first foundation. Number two is that freely available exchange of information and knowledge. Again, you're sitting in one of the most prestigious uh, institutes of higher learning, and I believe Europe has such a large infrastructure for information sharing and knowledge. And so you have two of the three ingredients that is critical for growth. But what is the third? To me, the third is the human spirit. Human spirit is such that nobody wants to stay where they are. Human spirit says, I will improve my life, and I will use the ingenuity, the creativity, and my motivation to improve my life. And this is a force nobody can stop. I grew up in a part of Chennai in India, South India, in a region called Santom. Santom was the place where St. Thomas, before 100 AD, came and established the St. Thomas Cathedral, which is called the Santom Cathedral. And it is called Santom because of the presence of Spanish traders before 100 AD. If human spirit could take people to such far shores in 100 AD, and if today Europe enjoys the benefits of education, information, and a liberalized economy, there is no way Europe stopped in its quest for economic growth. And I would share this with you as students. This is what you can contribute best in your quest to contribute to humanity. That spirit to succeed, the spirit to say, nothing can stop me from achieving what I want to achieve. And I wish you great success in your careers. Godspeed. Thank you.